How y'all doing? This is uh, Two Fat Guys Talk, episode 108, where we have migraine headaches. We are in a dark, dank corner in some dungeon that they've trapped me in, and the, there's, there's like water dripping from the ceiling and a skeleton shackled in a corner. It's all a fantasy dungeon trappings, really. Um... Spoilers, offensive content. Dave, how you doing? Not too bad. We're in the dungeon because after this, Carl's gets to watch anime. You well, know, I mean, that and the fact that... Uh, and I'm trying I, to help your migraine. Yeah, there's that. I was I was going to say something about devouring you whole. Yeah, devour... I, I might devour you whole later. Just, <laughs> just vore the shit out of you. God. <laughs> Okay, there, there, there's a word I never thought I'd hear out of your mouth, but okay. It was a good classy start to episode 108 of Two Fat Guys Talk. Uh, on a word winning <laughs> podcast of, about nothing really. It's kind of a zombie. It keeps going. But why? Dave, we have a whole bunch of shit to talk about today. A whole lot of things were announced and rumored about. And E3 is coming, and movie trailers have been released, and we have to nerd it up and talk about them for no apparent reason. So, what's the first topic on the list for episode 108? Well, we have Sega's new mini system versus Capcom's Frankenfuck system. Yes. I don't know what the official name of this Sega mini system is. Uh, All I really know is that they took it out of At Game's hands. Thank Christ. It's called the Sega Genesis Mini. Yes, so it this actually has a chance of being good, unlike all the at games mini Genesis units. Um seems to have a decent lineup. Uh the Japanese version comes with six button controllers, the other versions come with three. Uh a decent game lineup, including Streets of Rage 2, which is Usually one of the best games on the system, and Shinobi Three, which is one of the other really really good games on the Genesis. So, well, I mean, I'm a little bit surprised slash annoyed that we're getting Probotector instead of Contra Hardcore versus Contra Hardcore. Now, there's only one advantage to getting Probotector over Contra Hardcore. It, it, it means that we're not we're not going to have the super hard version. It's hardcore. It's hardcore. It's not hard corpse. It's never corpse. Whatever. You don't have to pronounce the P or the S now. I know, yeah, I know I make English, that is, English is I stupid. I make that stupid mistake sometimes, even when going with the Green Lantern core. It, I've called it corpse before. Uh, here's the thing. Language is dumb. It really shouldn't have a, P, a silent P <laughs> and the silent S in it. But I definitely, I would have, I would have preferred Contra Hardcore, the official version, rather than the European version, because it also means that we get a lot of it, we're getting a little bit of a stupid version. It's going to be easier than our original version, but it's not going to be the the graphics that I remember. Yeah, that's the thing, you know. And and Hardcore was a more story driven Contra anyway. You yeah. definitely want some some. Uh, faithfulness to the original release which is a bit of a bummer uh it, it's cool that they are putting on um shining force one though i think shining force one without shining force two kind of sucks as well it's kind of it, like it also really does need fantasy star four it really does uh you can skip fantasy star three but you can skip every single fantasy star game except four honestly <laughs> I, and I mean everyone ever released, including after the Genesis. <laughs> Even though I played Fantasy Star Online, the first game, for a while. Yeah. No, fuck that game. <laughs> Best and worst online game ever. Um, no, there's some quality titles like Castlevania Bloodlines, which is a very underrated Castlevania. Mm-hmm. Um, might be even be better than Super Castlevania 4, though don't tell the Super Castlevania 4 purists that... <laughs> It's a super good game. It really showed off some Genesis muscle. And then we got Capcom. Oh, God. You know, I saw this thing. This ugly, this... ugly system. <sighs> Capcom Home Arcade. Now, we are going to shit on this thing real hard. But I think, before we do that, 
we should talk about what it does right, and we should talk about what it could do to earn our $260 US. Sure. So, official Sanwa parts that have even been custom painted to match the ugly aesthetic. Yep. Okay, so that's one good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what it would have to do to earn my money is maybe be an FPGA console that wasn't just relying on emulators, have a bigger mm-hmm. game selection, many more CPS 1 and 2 titles would be nice, and uh, maybe not illegally license an emulator without the permission of people who worked on it. That would earn my $260. <laughs> Well, number one, it's not worth $260. I mean, two arcade sticks could be argued to be worth that if they weren't bound together in the ugliest yeah. shell ever. So, it's too it's too cramped. Yeah, it's like they really wanted to recreate the feeling of being socially awkward in mm. an arcade. This should have been two separate controllers or an actual mini box with two controllers coming from it. I I agree with that. Especially since for this to work you need an extra long power micro USB power no less Mm -hmm. and an extra long HDMI cable. If those were this thing's biggest sins though and it had an impressive selection of games on FPGA or something similar then I would have forgiven that and the ugly uh, aesthetics of the thing. But there are so many missteps with this system. Well, let's talk about the, the game selection to start with. <laughs> uh, we have the very little known 1944, which is okay, I guess. They renewed the Alien vs. Predator license so that they could release that really cool arcade beat em up, Alien vs. Predator. But for this thing, they renewed a license for this. Instead of yep. including it in a beat em up collection that you can download instead. Um, Mega Man The Power Battle, which sucks. Nobody gives a shit about those Mega Man arcade games. They were terrible. Uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, is that right? Yeah, Street Fighter no. 2 Dash? Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, not even Turbo. Y- yeah, Street Fighter 2 Turbo is Hyper Fighting. Is but it? it's not Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which is the definitive old competitive Street Fighter 2 game. Uh, Strider, which is pretty cool. Final Fight, which is pretty cool. Uh, they, put, which, they, they put the wrong Dark Darkstalkers game in here. Which one did they put in? One. Yeah, where's Darkstalkers 3? The, <laughs> the better the, version the, the in every way. The best Darkstalkers game, like, which I think is still CPS 2. Yeah, Don't I think so. Don't quote me on that. I get why there's no CPS 3 titles, CPS3, the arcade board, had a CD-ROM on it, which was kind of an ingenious move because when they needed to upgrade a game, they could just down order the new CD-ROM and p- swap out the old one for the new. But that would mean a lot of space taken up because even with not a lot of data, there was a ton of dummy data. Emulation of that would have been a bit of a hindrance. I get that. But, I mean, this game except selection... The, except everything you just said is wrong. Oh my god, what did I do? We're talking games that were, at the latest, going on on 800 meg discs. Not even... We weren't even talking DVD at that point. No, I get we're that. We're talking CD-ROM. And we're talking... Media is freaking cheap these days. So saying that we didn't have enough space to do 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 three? No, I'm sorry. On On this thing, that's... Two Sanwa arcade sticks and 260 bucks. They might have been needing to be on the cheap when it came to storage, though. Mm. And that's why I'd be okay if it was just a bunch of CPS 1 and 2 games. More than the 16 we got here. Because uh, the these games, there are some real gems here. There's also some real nothing in these titles. 1944 is not great. Uh, it's better than 1943, but uh, the shit I took earlier is better than 1943. So Pro Gear? I don't know what Pro Gear is. Cyberbots? Cyberbots is a pretty good fighting game. That's where, yeah. Jin, that's where Jin came from. Let's what? not let's not dunk on Cyberbots. No, Lutz. One I, character does not make a game. I will dunk on Captain Commando, the most overrated 2D beat-em-up ever made. Capcom Sports Club? 
I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it sucks. Eco Fighters. Like, <sighs> bring your A game here, Capcom. This isn't even talking about the potential lawsuit that this device is inviting because uh, it's using uh, em- an emulator called FB Alpha, which um, has is a. not no- available for corporate use. Yeah, there's the license specifically states there is no commercial use, but now FB Alpha's owner is saying that they licensed it, but they can't because there's a lot of work that is done by people who have not agreed to this license, which means Capcom is opening themselves up for a fucking lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Even if they weren't, it is still wildly immoral to do that. Yeah. Like, the, like, the, the, like if they were taking this seriously, go the FPJ hardware route, Get get some cheap storage that you can throw a bunch of CPS one and two titles in more than these sixteen, and then that might have been a buy. Uh, and I'm not even kidding. That might have been something that I would have, despite the novelty of it all, that might have been a buy because those are there are some good arcade games in the CPS one and two lineup. But like this, especially when you consider that there's a Neo Geo offering with so many more games than this and. That isn't inviting lawsuits. Like, it's... Even Nintendo's portables use a Nintendo-made emulator. There might be some code in there they didn't write, and there's a bit of a weird legal issue to talk about with that, but it's not as brazen as what Mm. Capcom has done here. This This both comes across as lazy, and I just don't like what I'm seeing here. They renewed the AFBP license for this thing. I still can't get over that. Mm-hmm. They, the, the thing keeping them from releasing one of their classic old beat-em-ups, and this is what they put it on. This whole thing feels like a joke. Like, who the fuck signed off on this thing? Well, we started in a negative light. What's our next topic, which is no doubt much more positive? <laughs> Well, we got the um, upcoming PS5. The rumors that have come out. Um, the, some of the rumored specs of it. As well as the Xbox One S Discless Edition. How many teraflops is the PS5? They're not saying. Good. Because who cares? <laughs> well, what Microsoft has already said is that their system will be more powerful. I don't agree with Ben Kuchera on a lot of things, because I think he's very incendiary and shitty. Uh, even he, he's a he's a polygon writer. Oh. Even if he tends to skew more progressive, as I do, but he calls like the PS Five the most boring, nothing next gen piece of news ever, and he's right. All it is is PS Five is coming. Here's some numbers. Well. My favorite system right now is the Switch, which is grossly underpowered compared to the rest of the next-gen stuff and is easily the better system. (laughs) Who cares about these stupid numbers? Numbers aside, there are are some interesting things we've already learned about the PS5. Name several. Backwards compatibility with, with the PS4, which means... Oh, and they've confirmed that it actually has a disk drive. So... It's not digitally compatible ba- backwards. It's actually going to be able to play our PS4 games. They're they're learning from the fiasco with the PS4 and the PS3. So that's actually forward momentum for Sony. Also, the processor and um, graphics chips will be um, AMD. That is. Let me let me let me say this. And the crowd goes mild. <laughs> I'm happy with the backwards compatibility stuff. That uh, is something that it is a good. lot of people were curious about. It is good, and it's interesting to see AMD getting uh, like more into console stuff, right? Supposedly, and now now we're getting in um, to kind of rumor stuff. Is that? Supposedly, the PS5 will support 8K resolutions, which, to quote you from a moment ago, the crowd goes mild. Because he- here's the other problem. You can say that it supports 8K. We don't even have 8K TVs available in North America yet. Ooh. I play my Switch mostly in portable mode on 720p. <laughs> You're fucking disgusting. Okay. 
<laughs> you're you're history's greatest monster, Carlos. Not even 1080. Why? Well, well, the portable doesn't support 1080 in portable mode. Portable mode is 720p max. 1080 is natively supported when it's connected to the dock in the television. But that little display is a 720p display. This is so much the 8K. I can't wait until I'm playing a PS5 game and I can see scrotum wrinkles on my favorite dude <laughs> as he walks across my screen nude for my pleasure. Well, one of the things that was a bit of a, a downer from the PS3 to the PS4 is there really wasn't any improvement in the sound quality. And there has been improvements in sound, like even on, on, the, on the Xbox One had improved sound over, over the last system. So they are saying that there is going to be um, some new um, audio chips in the PS5, which is a step forward. But again, we're looking at a, we're talking about a system that has only recently been really announced. And it, they're talking 2020, probably winter 2020. For I guess, a release. I guess we'll find out more news about this not at E3 because Sony rightfully, wisely made the decision <laughs> that after last year's absolute garbage presentation, <laughs> the worst of any E3 presentation, that they're just not doing that again. I mean, last last year's presentation was actually worse than when Microsoft got owned in the whole Xbox One debacle. Oh yeah, it was worse than that. <laughs> Xbox has turned it around. Xbox is doing adaptive controllers. They're working with Nintendo. The first Microsoft Switch release, Cuphead, was recently released. And I'm debating getting the Switch version because I like Cuphead. And I'd love to play it in the portable mode. Shifting from Sony to Microsoft here. Yeah! Do you think Microsoft's release of a diskless Xbox One S is showing them moving for the next Xbox system to a diskless system? We all know they wanted to do it this system, but couldn't because of fan backlash and getting owned by Sony in the same conference. So, uh, is our consumers ready for a digital only system. I mean like a digital only mainline TV console. Yeah. Like the from, X, the from Xbox, one of the major publishers. The Xbox Boo. The Xbox Boo. Uh here's the thing. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it because I don't like to have a, like I tend to skew digital when I can. And I mean PC is when's the When's the last time, like, CD or DVD ROM drives were a big component of PCs? I finally pulled mine out of my computer. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like seriously, uh, like, an, an ex have an external one around just in case. Yeah. I don't get why Xbox just doesn't do what I've been saying they should do this whole time. Cartridges. <laughs> oh, God, no! <laughs> Bad Carlo. They could also do the Switch game card thing. No. I own I own more Switch game cards than I thought I would, to be honest with you. No, there's there, there's serious limitations there. Are there really? Yeah. Every time Optical Media has showed more storage, cartridges and solid state media has caught up immediately. Yeah, a cartridge with flash storage would destroy a DVD in terms of storage. Okay. And that data would be far faster loading. And the cartridge could have additional hardware on it, like it used to in the NES days, for new effects. Except you're forgetting one very big factor. Uh, what's that? Cost. Yes. And as we all know, capitalism is on its way out the door. We're finally reaching the socialist future. And everyone will get a cartridge Xbox boo. <sighs> I, I like how you automatically took to my <laughs> title for it. <laughs> it's a good title. Uh, here's the thing. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind it. Will there be consumer backlash? I don't know. Right now, PC gamers are sniveling and crying and shooting beams of sand out of their genitals over the fact that they have to download the Epic Store. Holy shit, the crybaby backlash. <laughs> I didn't realize how deep this went when we talked about it in the last yeah. fucking episode. 
wow, there are some man children in the PC yep. gamer community. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I, I see official write-ups from everything from Kotaku to Polygon to every freaking site making arguments back and forth and why this is okay to be mad, why why it's okay to be mad at Epic, why we should be mad at Steam for not, you know, updating. Here's the thing. Right now on my desktop, I've got freaking icons for Steam, Uplay, I'm sorry, um, Epic, <laughs> as well as Origin. Look. I play games from every developer. I am not a fanboy to any one company. You, I will go where the games are. So if I have to have four fucking storefronts on my computer, oh no, double click on storefront. But Dave, don't Run you know? Game. Don't you know that Epic's in bed with the Chinese government? Oh fuck, I hate that argument. Just like Valve and literally every big corporation ever. Valve and Epic don't care about you. They don't care about you. Don't be a loyalist to them. As for the question at hand about the discless Xbox, bring it on. Bring the cartridge Xbox. It's not cartridge. Shit. I don't know. I don't know what's best here. Now, I word my question there very carefully. Are we ready for it? My argument? No, we're not. How expensive is it to have an optical drive in a console? That's a rhetorical question. Let's let's say it costs 100 bucks. I mean, I, I I can buy a external slim one for thirty four bucks Canadian. Microsoft so that's all, like eighty five cents American. Microsoft and even Sony already absorbs the cost of the hardware just to pedal games, right? Pretty like, much. You're you're getting these systems for less than they're what they're actually worth. Where where my argument comes from is is the same place that we were five years ago with the Xbox Xbox One. The reason why. We're not ready for it. Yes, PC gamers, you buy your games digitally these days. You don't go to a future shop or to Best Buy and buy a game anymore. Because even if you did buy a box off the shelf, you you open up this giant box and there's a fucking download code to your... To well, Steam or something. Fuck. There's no disc anymore. You don't go to a future shop at all, period. True, anymore. true. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean. No, yeah, I know. You don't go to EB Games and buy a physical copy and get an actual disc for PC. But those of us that are buying one and two thousand dollar computers tend to be in an area that has half decent internet. We can afford, you know, ten meg, hundred meg, two hundred meg connections. We're we tend to have stable connections, but. Joe Farmer, who wants to play the game as well, out on the farm kind of thing, might have one meg internet that goes down every five minutes and in a satellite. We're not ready for an online only system. And digital only means you got you need to have the bandwidth from your provider. You need to be actually have the monthly bandwidth to be able to support that kind of thing. You're touching on an important issue too, and that's that uh yeah, there's a... Uh... There's a social justice issue here as well. Not everyone has access to that. You're correct. There's also the issue of video game archival. As much as I like digital copies, I absolutely hate that there aren't laws and procedures in place to archive and protect video games. I don't think it should be legal for Nintendo to keep people from being able to just access their library of old games. I think public domain is an important thing that video game companies shun. And there are things like the Final Fantasy VIII source code and master discs that are just lost because we don't have this, right? Mm -hmm. And digital-only consoles only add to that. Google's streaming-only service is going to be shitty for a wide variety of reasons, but it's also shitty because it's leaving all the ownership of this stuff to big corporations, right? Like... The artistry of video games is being commodified. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure commodified is not a word. <laughs> yeah, give it two years. Give it two years. Uh, now, this does lead me into our next topic. Yeah. We have Sony and sexual content in games. Now, I haven't heard of this. What's going on? 
basically Sony is going has a unwritten non-specific thing against sexual content in games in their system now. No. And and their excuse is that they have they're using the Me Too movement to justify that sexuality shouldn't be in games. Now, how do we know that this is true? This is something they've said? This is something that they've actually commented on multiple times now. Okay, well... The, the, the reference to the Me Too movement is a direct comment from Sony themselves. Okay, let's get one thing out of the way first right now. The Me Too movement is critically important. Yep. Um, every... Virtually every single woman alive has faced harassment, intimidation, and sexual violence. And almost all of these happen at the hands of men. Um, Me Too is about bringing that to light, and that is critically important. Now that that's out of the way, Sony does not give two shits about the Me Too movement. Uh, They're doing what they think is financially viable for themselves. And a crackdown on sexual content... While there definitely is sexuality in video game stories and art where there doesn't need to be, sexuality is also an important part of fiction and storytelling in specific contexts. So obviously it's a stupid move by Sony to limit this if game devs are trying to put that out. So let me, like, give, let me give, you some, give you some examples. Okay, go ahead. Um, okay, Dead or Alive. Uh-huh. Not touched at all. Okay. Whereas the last version of that one ninja one, um, dead or alive? No, I'm not dead or alive. <laughs> we 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 uh, sing sing, Senra and Kagura. Yeah, they sent it back multiple times to ha- have things changed. Now the problem isn't just that Sony is. Now, censoring things, I mean, Nintendo's putting uncensored versions of these games on their system when Sony's not. That's how much the scale is fucked up here. Games that Nintendo would never have touched in the past, they are embracing wholeheartedly uncensored, whereas Sony is telling the developers to go back to the drawing board and change everything. <laughs> well, I hope they lose publishers then. Like, well, and it, it kind of seems like how Microsoft for a while there was willing to take in all these RPGs, but then we were like, we don't want them on our system, and therefore made their the Xbox 360 less relevant. Okay. Back in the day, now Sony, it, the problem is it's unwritten. They're not giving specifications of what is allowed and what isn't. Now, I mean, there are. It's not just a scale that goes up and down here. If you don't want, for example, specifically, you don't want panty shots, say it. You need a written scale here. So when I'm the developer, look at your rules. I don't have to worry about submitting my game to you, paying a fee, and you saying, no, this isn't acceptable. I go back, I change it. I bring it back to you. It's still not acceptable. and it. It seems like even within Sony, no one knows between one from one person to the next it changes. Um, yeah, Sony should be consistent about this. And again, there's a case to be made that sometimes things are over sexualized when they don't need to be. I do not rely on Sony to ever properly police that though. And Sony shouldn't be. Sony should not be the person saying no, this content shouldn't be... Okay, it's their system, so yes, they're allowed and, and, to do that. And, and obviously, they don't want to be totally hands-off. Because, like, if, 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 if uh, like, you, you know, they obviously don't want blatant pornography on their system. Absolutely. I get that. And I would love if, if, if people tried to submit, like, alt-right games for Sony to be like, uh, no, you know? I, I definitely think it's probably a case where they're they're overextending their bounds for reasons that aren't necessarily totally kosher. Sony's done a lot of real questionable shit lately. They don't want to play well with other other platforms. Mm-hmm. They they want to make shitty E three shows and then they blame E three for not being the same. Like I don't know, Sony Sony's starting to smell their own farts a little bit and really liking the scent. And that's going to lead to their downfall if they keep that up. I think we might be um, going back to a 
PlayStation 3 reveal. You know when they told us that the game was the system was going to be eight hundred dollars, and if you didn't like it, fuck off. Mm-hmm. Sony has so said a that, bunch of people told them to fuck off. Well, the, P, the, the, the PS3 <laughs> was not a good system to own for two thirds of, of its life cycle. Yep. I mean, I want Xbox because why would I support Sony with that crap? Exactly. Now, Sony has said that the the PlayStation Five will be priced appropriately and that people will find it appealing. So, I mean, if it's priced around the, the price the, of the um, PS4 Pro, that would be a good price point for a PS5, I think. They could do better. They could make it cheaper than that. But, yeah, that I, I thought I should bring that up because that is becoming a problem with some developers of niche niche RPGs that had a little bit of um, sexual content to them. Like, Neptunia games had some of that that sort of content to it, etc. And it was never... Okay, they were in a bathing suit. Oh, no. Kind of I stuff. mean, if you're okay with DOA, like, DOA yeah. is the most blatant pandering shit for that anyway. Even, even uh, the slightly less so DOA 6 is still like that, you know? Like... Uh, again, the the idea of sexual content is, it's it's always so fucked up because sexuality and sexual content is a thing that both um, policing it is wrong in many contexts, and also being far too open with it is wrong in many contexts because that kind of objectification that comes with that happens to women a lot. Uh, but but again, again, Sony's not the pe the, the, the Sony. Sony saying they're doing it for the Me Too movement is bullshit. They're doing it because some executive has laid down the law on the inside, and now they're seeing fit to judge this, and they do not have any clue. It's it's also them looking at the Me Too movement and not understanding what it is about. No, the Me Too movement is not because Senren Kagura games are made. Yeah. The Me Too movement is, for example... Someone cosplaying a Senran Kagura character at a con, and someone thinking that they get to take their picture without permission, mm-hmm. and touch their butt without permission, yes. or sexually assault them. Yeah. That's what that's about. Dead or Alive 5 came, came or was mentioned, and so was Dead or Alive 6. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't actually have this on my, on my topic list, but it actually brings to mind an actual topic to bring up. Yeah! So, let's talk about what is appropriate DLC when it comes to a game. I tell you what's not appropriate. It nearly being a hundred fucking dollars. Sorry? Did you say a hundred? Sorry, for the first pack. Dead or Alive 5, and I didn't know this until recently, had twelve hundred and ninety-three doll. Sorry. Twelve hundred and X amount... Of DLC. Yeah. No, it's stupid. Costumes. DOA 6? Mostly costumes. Already has almost $300. Sure. Worth of DLC. It's absolutely perverse. It's... I, I mean, okay, I heard that Train Simulator had like $10,000 worth of DLC. Yeah, but Train Simulator don't got no titties. And that makes it better? Yeah. What? No. Look... DLC is getting fucking out of hand, and we've got to start pushing back against, well, Tecmo Koei. DLC has been out of hand for like a decade or two now. <laughs> like, DLC is not starting to get out of hand. DLC is controlling us right now. Right now, DLC is holding a gun to my head, unless I say something really good about DLC. You know what I love, Dave? DLC in games. I actually did a little bit of research on this, and you can say DLC has been out of hand for (laughs) decades. It's only the last um, few years where companies have been selling a regular priced game and then adding that amount of DLC that costs that much. I mean, it used to be back in the day, now granted, we're definitely dating ourselves saying this, but, you know, we used to unlock costumes in the game. Didn't have to pay for that shit. Man, this shit's been going on forever. 
Remember when PC devs would release buggy broken first versions and patch them later and sometimes even charge for the patches? I mean... Wow, you mean last week? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. This is... Dave, let me tell you about the evils of capitalism. Oh, God. Here comes capitalism, man. <laughs> well, anti-capitalism, man. No, it's, it's just... It's all part and parcel of that. Of course, people keep buying it. So they're like, hey, let's full charge game, full price game, and tons and tons of DLC on it so that one unit makes us the money of many units, even though it's totally immoral and wrong. It's evil. DLC, a lot of DLC practices are evil. Kudos to Smash Ultimate for making DLC where, you know, you know exactly what it costs and you get a ton of content with it. And here is a bundle of all the DLC together where its cost is also clear. There's also a bunch of DLC that doesn't really matter at all, and it's relatively cheap. But I mean, fucking... It's unreal, the the fucking DLC that Dead or Alive gets because people need to put Marie Rose in a string bikini. I'm like, even from a practical standpoint, and even ignoring Marie Rose's age, that's what porn sites are for. <laughs> Stop giving Tecmo Koi your money and start giving it to the ISPs who run image boards? Is that what I'm going to say? Well, um, I, I think we've pretty much talked this topic to death. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, next is the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Oh, what's in it? Well, we actually just got um, some more information on that. Oh, you like we specifically, Kat, Konami reached out to Carlos and Dave of Two Fat Guys Talk. Be like, hey guys, you want to report on this? And we're like, you bet, Konami. The show brought to you by Konami. All right. What do we got in it? Okay, what games are in it? Read them out to me, and I'll tell you yay or nay. So we got eight games total in the collection. We've got the original Castlevania. Good. Castlevania 2. Meh. Um, for both, the NES, as well as the Game Boy version. So we have Castlevania 2 Game Boy? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That game was good. Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. Which version? Which music version? NES. Oh, damn it. They should have put the Famicom soundtrack on that. And Super and Super Castlevania 4 for the Super NES. Okay, good. Um, now, rounding up the collection will be the original Castlevania, the Adventure Game Boy game. Uh, a lame game, but okay. Castlevania Bloodlines for Sega Genesis. That's a good game. That's a good game. And a surprise to me, Kid Dracula for the Famicom. Yeah, that's right. That was, that was Alucard. The, the boss of Kid Gradek is Gallimoth, who is the optional boss in Symphony of the Night. Him and Alucard have their rivalry. But, unfortunately, it's the original version, not the actual Game Boy um, remake. How much is this collection slated to cost? 20 bucks. I'll get it. <laughs> uh, Super Castlevania 4 and Bloodlines alone, along with the original Castlevania... Those are games, all three of those games are worth the price of admission right there. Castlevania 3 is also worth it. I hope there's a Famicom soundtrack option. Because the Famicom soundtrack for that game is so much better. Yeah, they won't have it, unfortunately. Like, I'm okay with an, with an anniversary collection, but I kind of wish that these were actual enhanced versions. Versus just giving us the, the original ROMs. Uh... I don't know. I don't. I don't always need an old game remade. If they're gonna remake an old game, really remake it, like Blaster Master Zero, for example. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see. Now, I I know Castlevania Two for NES gets a lot of hate. It deserves a bunch of that hate. I'm not going to argue this. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I'd like to see that remade in Blaster Master Zero style. Sure, that should that's a remake I, I could get behind. A real Metroidvania Castlevania 2, where they like make it basically like a Symphony of the Night type of game with Simon. I mean, I would love if Konami would reach out to say Way Forward and make a Castlevania 1 and 3 um, compilation where you just make one storyline throughout both games. Okay. <laughs> had you there for a second, didn't I? No, I'm, I'm like, 
this isn't something I need, but I'll take it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to buy the, the the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, mainly because I don't feel the need to go back and play those old games again. But I do kind of hope that Konami takes that money and actually gets a developer that knows what the hell they're doing to make, I don't know, a Symphony of the Night 2. Um, I kind of wish that they were giving us the Game Boy Advance games playable on other systems. Or, or slash the DS games. I mean, that would be something that would give me value. I mean, it'd be nice to see... Uh, again, this goes back to the issue of preservation as well. I'm of the opinion that even in our capitalist libertarian nightmare that we live in, it should be completely illegal for us to go to an archive, download Castlevania 1, and play it for free. But I mean, that's that's just me. Yeah, this collection should be okay, and I get why I get wanting more out of it because there are some really good Castlevania games that we're going to be waiting a long time to see as part of their own collection. Though personally, I kind of wish Konami would um, crash and die, and the license could go to action companies who are going to do something with the license. Who, who would you want to get the Castlevania license? Oof. You have to answer in ten seconds. The God of War creators. Hmm, a God of War, a Castlevania made by them? That might be interesting. There already was a couple Castlevania character action games, for better or worse, but that was Mercury Steam, which then went and made a really awesome Metroid game for Nintendo. It's kind of like they were saving their best work for later, you know, like... Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the, the Castlevania reboot games had interesting ideas, they just didn't play very well. Sure. No, something like the latest God of War, but Castlevania, that, that'd be cool as shit. Yeah. But... I, I'd even accept somebody who did really good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going back to way forward. Here. Back to way forward. <laughs> way forward. forward I want to way you, back. I want you to make all of my 2D games. I want you to make all my games. <laughs> Pretty much. That leads me into a company who I would not want to do a Castlevania game, um, but still need to bring up anyway. Do it! So, we're back to EA mm -hmm. and Battlefront 2. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront 2, specifically. Uh, I recently got that as part of the $20 EA subscription, so I jumped in because I'm on a little bit of a Star Wars kick right now. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to play the single-player game attached to it. And let me say, for the even if it had just been 20 bucks. The single-player storyline was well worth playing. The storyline was well-written. The gameplay was was just difficult enough on hard to be enjoyable. The spaceship combat was great. The dialogue was great. I really wish we got an X-Wing versus TIE Fighter that used the engine of Battlefront 2 but in a single-player kind of environment. Hell, even a multiplayer ship-based combat would be fun. And I know they've added that into the multiplayer, but I haven't touched the multiplayer, to be honest. But I thought I'd mention here that if you've been on the, on, on the ropes, kind of wondering whether it was worth getting Battlefront 2 simply for the single-player storyline, if you can get it for under 20 bucks, it's well worth playing. I told you a bunch about the storyline earlier, and you... You kind of thought it was neat, but you're not... You won't play it. I might watch a Let's Play of it. Yeah. It, even if that's all you want to do. I mean, it's well worth knowing because it is canon. Hell, you can Let's Play it and I'll comment over you and also make fun of you when you fail. Yeah. My no. only caveat is you have to play it on the highest difficulty. <laughs> We're, I'm not doing it again. Okay. That leads us still into, into games, but... Um, the tragedy of the Notre Dame fire. Oh, the tragedy. Oh, no. A few pieces of artwork are burned so the rich people can't like them anymore. Oh, no, the nobody who died or got injured. Oh, no, the billionaires donating to Notre Dame when Flint still doesn't have clean water, when... There are countless third world countries that need that money desperately more than Notre fucking Dom. 
That's why I brought up the topic. Because I knew you'd bring up most of that. There are so many things that need money more than Notre Dame right now. Look, art's important. I get it. But, nah, sorry, man. I have zero... If people died during it or got injured, I'd feel a lot worse and I wouldn't be saying all this callous shit. Right now, I don't feel... I don't even feel slightly bad about this. I don't think... I don't think... I don't condone it. I don't condone going and damaging Notre Dame or vandalizing it. But who cares? Good on Ubisoft for letting their game be kind of this historical reference point to help recreate it. I think that's neat. I still think Ubisoft should spend their time on more worthwhile causes anyway. So, whatever. What do you think of Notre Dame? (laughs) Okay, from a historical standpoint, it is a shame that 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 the building got damaged. Mm -hmm. Because, unfortunately, in the world today, too many of our historical buildings are being destroyed either through war or through just vandalism. So from a historical standpoint, Notre Dame getting damaged is a damn shame. Of the artwork in there, I mean, one of a kind kind of stuff. So it, it, it is a shame. Now, granted, they did get a lot of the stuff out of Notre Dame. Even while it was burning, they had a, a brigade line pulling out what they could salvage from within within inside. The um, organ didn't get damaged too much, so that that's good. Uh, the again one of a kind artwork of the front um, glass stained glass um, system they had there didn't get damaged. So th- there's some good things there. It, it's just it's a shame that another historical monument has been damaged. I I do like the fact that. Thanks to one guy's assignment from Ubisoft for, I think it was Assassin's Creed 3, did have the most accurate representation of what it looked like before, and that they can use that as reference to try and put it back to the way that it looked. I do think that that one guy doing that for Ubisoft um, gets a thumb up for for going beyond this is indirectly another argument for video proper video game preservation <laughs> Funny historical enough. preservation um i i guess i can give a thumbs up to ubisoft for i mean they're, they're kind of taking advantage of the fire but they are giving away the game that had that in it sure and i, I mean it, it's to drum up a little bit of business and everything else to show what their games can do but still thumbs up ubisoft no, no, I'll give Ubisoft, uh, Ubisoft a thumbs up. And yeah, despite the callous talk I was giving, you know, I don't condone the act. Like, we don't it's actually just... know, like, th- the building was being worked on for maintenance. Uh, yeah, we... I heard it was an electrical fault. Fuck. Okay, well, at least it wasn't freaking arson. It's a shame it's not an attack. Yeah, I wouldn't support arson. Not, no, like, never. Look... There are there are things that I support, like vandalizing and destroying. Obviously, I don't support that police, but seriously, fuck Confederate monuments. But I mean, still, I, again, I just have a tough time being having any kind of sympathy about no, this. No, and, and your <laughs> point your point about the fact that billionaires all of a sudden got all that repair money like almost overnight is pathetic. Mm-hmm. Because it shows how fast these people could put money forward to fix things like Flint and everything else. But don't give a fuck. Or just society in general. Billionaires have not earned many of their billions. They're built on the backs of the people that got them the money. Jeff Bezos doesn't deserve his salary. No. His workers do. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. But they, this will turn into a different podcast if I keep that up. What's yeah. the next topic? Uh, well, actually, th- this is one that you brought up today. I did. The Angry Bird crew. Yeah, Angry Birds started posting some uh, uh, LGBT LGBT QI plus. That's the one I like to use. Fan art, and uh, people started giving them grief. And Angry Birds clapped back, saying, "You know, nobody had this complaint when we posted heteronormative fan art. It's kind of interesting the divide this caused. We are not changing this or taking them down." 
So I just wanted to give a shout out to Angry Birds to Rovio for sticking their guns saying, hey, LGBTQIA plus representation is important. And if you don't like it, fuck you. <laughs> so kudos to them. And I guess this is the last topic on our list, but it's probably going to be a lengthy one. Star Wars. Star Wars. So, the Rise of Skywalker trailer hit. And we have some theories. Well, number one, when it got linked to me from, I think it was within Facebook or something. And I clicked on, I'm like, okay, let's see what some fans put together. Because I did not believe this was an official trailer. Just based on the subtitle. It sounded way too fan theory-ish. Get through the whole trailer, I'm like, huh. That was put put together pretty well. Must have gotten some inside um work done a little bit. And then I start hitting YouTube, I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, crap. That was real. You didn't think this, the shot of Daisy, the real Daisy Ridley running alongside a tie and then jumping at it with a lightsaber was fake? I got about 15 seconds in, I'm like, fake. Hmm. So yeah, I saw that little clip, thought that somebody had managed to get like a little clip from um, promotional material, and I'm like, yeah, fake. But then, then, you know, I started to wonder, okay, was that real? Hit YouTube. And then I realized, oh, wait, that was real. So then I watched the full full thing. And I got to say, when we got to the subtitle coming up and you heard Palpatine's laugh, I got a little chill down my spine. It, it was great timing to have it in there. The trailer was like every other trailer they've done for the last two movies. Yeah, th- there's a certain cadence that the new trailers like to follow. Yeah. Like, however, this one did have some very interesting cinem- um, sh- shooting to it. Cinematography? Yeah, that's Is what that I was the going word for. you meant to say? I was going with that, but it all tripped over apart. it. Yeah, no, the this one could be very interesting. The subtitle, though, does leave some interesting ideas, especially seeing as... Palpatine's laugh was in there. Now you, we, over quesadillas earlier, (laughs) you were saying that you thought that Rey might be a clone of Palpatine, and I tended to agree with that. That actually makes a lot of sense. Her mysterious origins, her force capabilities, which is, by the way, absolutely no Mary Sue complaint. Uh, That is... uh, if you're the kind of person who's making that complaint about the new Star Wars movies, go listen to something else. You will find no kindred spirits here. Um, it definitely explains a lot about Rey, specifically. Well, and, and, and that's one of my theories. Like, I, I've gone from thinking that Rey might be a Luke clone to being potentially an Anakin clone, which that's still possible here, being a Palpatine clone, or Rey may just be another... Um, force creation like Anakin was. The fact that... And sorry, I'm going to really geek out here on Star Wars because... Let's get nerdy! (laughs) Pretty much. Um, Back in Episode 7, we've only heard the clone word once. And that was when they were talking about Finn and whether... um, whether they need need to start bringing clone troopers versus using the commander's stormtroopers. And they dropped the clone word once. We haven't heard it since. I think that was on purpose. Because I, I, we know, just by them saying that, we know that cloning's still very much a thing. Now, during the Star Wars celebration when they brought the trailer out, they did reveal that Palpatine is dead up to and up to episode nine. He's been dead. So there haven't been any clones out there or anything else of Palpatine. He's been honestly dead. So the only way that we would actually see him now is if somebody made a new clone or if he's gonna force ghost us. Or if it's Ray, mm-hmm. now it, just because I say that doesn't mean that you know Ray is going to be a bad guy now or anything else. 
Like, you can have a clone that doesn't have the person's memories. Granted, I'm borrowing a little bit from the Extended Universe stuff, but let's face it, while the Extended Universe isn't canon anymore, or is rather in its own canon... Well, the old Extended Universe is its own canon now. Yeah. Because there's a new Extended Universe now. I just consider it current, but yeah, you're right. Um, That doesn't mean that they're not going to cherry-pick all the good stuff they think they can get out of it. Like we don't, we don't have to have Luuk Skywalker. Oh, sure, sure. And in fact, let's just not have Luuk Skywalker. Luke! I like to call him Luke. I always like to do the two-syllable. Two hey, they, they, picked, they plucked out Thrawn and other yep. elements, right? So they will pluck Legends ideas and put them into the main timeline. I get it. Um, the thing is... And again, this is absolutely no way to support some kind of bullshit Ray's a Mary Sue argument. Ray's a great character. If you don't like her, you're dumb. If you don't like the new Star Wars movies, you're allowed to dislike them, but you're probably dumb. I don't know. <laughs> like, there are people who have legit reason to dislike them. You're not dumb. Everyone else is. It would explain a lot. Like, it would explain Ray seemingly having a knack for this kind of thing. If she's... There's a little bit of Palpatine in her. It could be an, an interesting subplot. Palpatine trying to take over her body because he's waking up in there, right? Like, The Force Awakens. That that title could mean something two movies later. It's fine. Um, I think the rise of, like, rise of the Skywalker... We have differing ideas for this. I think Skywalker is going to become what Jedi are now called because The Last Jedi was The Last Jedi. And so Luke's legacy is that now Force users are going to be called Skywalkers. And that's why I think the subtitle is as it is. You think Luke is going to come back and bring Han Solo and make I do with not. Him? Weird, weird theories you were telling <laughs> oh, yeah. me earlier. Over do I have to start posting your stupid stuff on that? I have never <laughs> thought that. Oh, Han, Han and Mace are alive, Dave. No, unfortunately, make it love in Star Killer Base. <laughs> God. I mean, I, I originally thought that Ray was a Luke clone because when she touched Luke's lightsaber, she got all those flash forces mm-hmm. that wouldn't really happen unless you know she had some sort of massive link to Luke, sort of thing. But that's less and less likely now. I mean, the rise of Scott the. Rise of Skywalker could just simply be his legend empowering the Rebellion to take out the Empire. Because, I mean, they started to show that, you know, Luke's final battle there was already having the kids talk about, you know, the great Jedi Master Skywalker kind of thing. It could just be that. It could be. I mean, the last Jedi resulted in Rey being the last Jedi. Maybe the new, new Republic will be called the Skywalker Republic. You never know. Uh, I love the new movies. I love them a lot. I love them way more than the shitty prequels, and I love them... I just love them. But one thing I dislike about them is that the new Republic got iced so fast. Yeah. (laughs) We didn't really, outside of novels, get to see much of the... This new extended universe's new Republic before Starkiller Base obliterated it. And I think that is a little bit of a weakness of the new movies is they had a chance with their secondary movies to expand on that stuff. Instead, they went for origin stories. Sure. Now, Rogue One, fantastic movie. Love Rogue One. Sure. <sighs> Fuck you. <laughs> the new Han Solo movie kind of sucked. Didn't see it yet. Just don't. Kind of want to. But they could have had secondary stories that they didn't have to write novels for. Otherwise, like you have no idea why Leia is in charge of the Rebellion and not part of the New Republic. Um, She's in charge of the Resistance. They're not the Rebellion. Take that, nerdo. Pew, pew. Those are my phasers. Yeah, Phasers! That's the and, right way to go for Star Wars! And you just pissed off every Star Wars fan ever. Live long and prosper. <laughs> That's what Obi-Wan said, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I, I mean, 
they could Why have... didn't they just call the Enterprise for help? <laughs> wow, the Enterprise would go down in about 20 seconds. You really think the Enterprise would destroy most of the shit in Star Wars? Well, maybe not. Um... No, Star Wars is weird science fantasy. Star Trek is at least somewhat based in science fiction. Yeah, exactly. So no, Star Wars would win. You're right. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> Don't know what I was thinking there. So here's here's the Enterprise over on the left-hand side. Here's a Star Destroyer. Star Destroyer basically just runs the Enterprise over and it's over. I mean, I know someone who would argue that very fiercely because uh, this person who you know exactly who I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I do. <laughs> Has various uh, Star Trek guidebooks that sh- tell you the power of a photon torpedo, and uh-huh. we can make comparisons to what Star Destroyers can yep. do. But then there's the fact that Star Wars has had high technology for well over forty thousand years, so I don't know. Yeah. It, it, anyway, moving on. Moving on. Moving <laughs> on. Go on. on. This is stupid. Yeah. Live long and force be with you. Yes. <laughs> It's it's just a shame that Disney hasn't taken advantage of that and just had the two movies so far in the New Order um, timeline. Because as Battlefront 2 single-player storyline shows, you can easily have awesome storylines that explain a good chunk of things in in a short time period. Sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to The Rise of the Skywalker. Oh, Yeah. I've enjoyed these movies. Uh, the Force Awakens reminded me that Star Wars movies could be good and have good acting. Uh, I know that uh, The Last Jedi, there's some contention. Uh, I enjoyed everything except the overlong casino part. The part that should have been <laughs> completely scrapped and been done in Cloud City so you could have Lando there but instead. We're, but we're getting Lando now. We, we, we we're got getting, Billy D. We're, Williams. We're getting Londo in the Millennium Falcon. Yes. I would say they're forgiven for the casino scene part in part eight, but they're still not. Because honestly, Disney should have looked at that whole sequence and said, scrap it and start over. Because that section legitimately sucked. It, it was, it, 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 I got why it was there. It overstayed its welcome. I really wanted to explore more of the themes the rest of the movie was tackling mm-hmm. because it really was tackling some challenging themes. I think a lot of why some people don't like it is because that's something that Star Wars doesn't typically like to do. Um, and I kind of get that. A lot of the reason some people didn't like The Last Jedi was because women were so prominent and the men were fuck-ups. And they didn't want reality to be mirrored too closely, I guess. So I don't really care about their criticisms. I do think there were good things about the prequels that maybe we're not seeing in the new movies. Like the scope of the universe was a really big one. And I kind of hope that Rise of the Skywalker gives us the best stuff of the new movies and still has some of the best stuff of the prequels. Because that would be my ideal send-off for this trilogy. Where do you think... Well, n- number one, there's got to be a time skip between eight and nine. I thought there should have been one between seven and eight, but there wasn't. <laughs> it happened right after. Yeah. There's got to be a time skip, because the amount of capital ships... And yeah, again, we're going back in the nerd nerd heaven here, but um, the number of capital ships that the Empire currently has, unfortunately, is just too massive for anything other than a massive fleet to take out at this point. One Jedi is not going to win this war. Taking out um what's Kylo Ren? Kylo Ren, thank you. Taking out Lame Solo there. Lame Solo. Kylo Ren's not bad. Oh, not come bad. on. At, at no point has he come across as anywhere near cool as Darth Vader. He's not supposed to be cool. Kylo Ren is supposed to be a conflicted person who ultimately chose the wrong path. That doesn't make him cool. It doesn't make him compelling. Lame Solo there. I also want to point out Darth Vader's not that cool. Darth Darth Vader is super depressed and a terrible person. Like... Okay. Change cool to... 
He's formidable <laughs> and foreboding. I think Kylo Ren is both of those things. They're different characters. They're going to have different motivations. You don't want just another Darth Vader. True. True. It, I I have not been a big fan of Kylo Ren. I'm, I'm hoping to get more out of that character now that he has severed all of his ties to the light side kind of thing. Uh, I, I just don't see how they're going... We can't have a scenario like Return of the Jet, Return of the Jedi. You know, the rebellion wins, and this is, becomes a mop up operation, like, like it was. I just don't, I don't see how we're gonna wrap this up with the, with the the last movie. That's good. That means it's tough to predict, which, which I like, which, which I'm glad for it. Unfortunately, because I've gotten back into my Star Wars geek phase here recently and gone through Battlefront 2 storyline, I've got a little bit more information now about just how um, how vast the Empire was even before taking out, out the New Republic. That it, it's just so formidable and they have so few allies unless... And this this is a big unless they're it they're gonna bring in a bunch of um, allies from beyond the rim, kind of thing. Like spoiler alert here for Battlefront Two, everybody. But literally, the end of Battlefront Two happens right before they evacuate um, the planet at the start of Episode Eight. Okay. Sending a special agent out to the rim to try and find their allies. It's why when Leia did her general distress beacon to all of her allies and no one responded back, they knew they were fucked. There's probably still going to be some Republic remnants. They destroyed a few worlds, but I mean, there's the New Republic is bigger than that. Except, unlike the actual Old Republic back from the prequels, this New Republic was not... It was kind of a non-starter. It's fine. Will. They got people. They got people. They're good. And unfortunately, most of their fleet was in those systems. They'll find allies. Or they'll do this. Ray will... Whatever new super weapon the First Order makes, Ray will actually force control it and fling it at the First World homeworld. Did find out a little bit of information in Battlefront about where Finn and the Stormtroopers are all coming from. Turns out that the, the First Order had been kidnapping, had kidnapped like two different generations of kids from all these worlds. And that's where all the Stormtroopers came from. They're indoctrinated kidnaps. Yep, child soldiers. It's pretty wretched when you think about it. So, the First Order is very evil. Even more so than freaking the Empire was. And that's a pretty tall order. I'm pretty sure Palpatine would have kidnapped children. Except in his case, he didn't have to kidnap them. He had control of the universe, so he just... There's an inside joke me and a bunch of friends kind of are in on. Yeah. And I'll put this out there because I think it's funny. I once said to some friends that... Um, would it have been as terrible when Anakin killed all the younglings if they were actually called the younglings. Yes! Would anyone really care? Yes! Because it'd be like, oh no, Anakin killed a bunch of people. Yeah, he killed the younglings! And? <laughs> no, who, what important people did he kill? That's awful. Because if it's the younglings, it's like, Oh, he killed this useless group of people who were taking up that house. I guess we can rent it out again. That's that's pretty cool. But Ow! no, no, seriously, what bad thing did he do? Like, if they were called the Younglings, no one would have given a shit that he murdered supposedly children. So they'd be like, oh, we killed a bunch of children. Oh, they were Younglings, though. I guess that's sad. <laughs> Maybe. That is awful. That's totally what the freaking Empire would do to justify it. To take out the U and be like, oh, we have just heard a word that 
Darth Vader has killed many younglings, and everyone cheers, and they show a picture of a youngling, and one's like, oh, don't worry, it's a youngling. Oh, good, kill it. Yeah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I think if they were called the younglings... Now, let's be real. I already have very little sympathy because I just don't like human children. What about all the, all the alien children in there? I feel slightly more sad for them. Again, wouldn't really, though. And then I think about, oh, wait, they're just younglings. Who cares? <laughs> oh, God. Because it's like, I, I, I kill children. Uh-huh. I mean, we've all killed children in our day. What else did you do? Like, personally, I'm a little more offended by the fact you're trying to choke your wife. It's like, I'm pretty sure Padme would be like, so you killed the younglings. Okay. Well, that's it. I don't think I need to do anything more evil. Okay, good. Let's go fuck again. Let's go have our children. <laughs> You're awful. That's just horrible. Darth Vader, I want you to kill the younglings. And? Well, that's it. Aren't you going to make me do something more evil than that, my master? What are you talking about? They're children. Yeah, but they're the younglings. Nobody cares about them. Well, as part of Star Wars talk, uh -huh. that new game that's coming out. Which game? The... The Mandalorian? No, that's the TV show. Okay. No, it's the Fallen... Em Fallen... Jedi Fallen Empire? Yeah, something like that. I have only seen the title. Well, unfortunately, your typical white protagonist... Male? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. I was disappointed at that, but the um, idea behind it, the trailer was kind of neat, even despite that. What is the idea behind it? Uh, you've got your... I'm guessing he wouldn't have been a Jedi, he would probably one of their Padawans, and just trying to live live his life, not really dealing with anybody, don't reveal your powers, don't try and save people, but of course, being a Jedi, one of his friends on a work site starts trying, falling down into oblivion kind of thing. They're on Coruscant, I'm guessing. And he saved them, and now the, Inqu the Inquisitors from Rebels are hunting him down. Okay, cool, because when you first started describing that, it sounded a lot like Jedi Harvest Moon, but now, now we have an idea. Because at first, like, living your life, everyday life, is he a farmer, too? Does he get a girlfriend? <laughs> the only thing I have to do is hide your Jedi power is that this is Harvest Moon right now. Because every Harvest Moon <laughs> character was a was a youngling, a Jedi youngling, right? Oh, <laughs> you will fall in love with me. <laughs> I will fall in love with you. You will tend my vegetable garden. This has taken a turn. <laughs> Hey, you're the one who brought up Harvest Moon here, my friend. You're right, you're right. But it's I mean, your fault. Th then we started thinking about the implications <laughs> of Harvest Moon. And is the main character hypnotizing his wives? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, trailer looks interesting. Mm hmm. It's a single player game with absolutely no microtransactions or DLC. Yeah, interesting. The fact the fact that EA actually had to put those points up on the board for the trailer says a lot. I get why though. Here's hoping they live up to that and be like, "Psych, actually tons of DLC." Yeah. Would you like an evil evil yongling thong? I think we call it a thongling. <laughs> Look, if they wanted, if they gave me a great game and then gave me a full expansion, that's the kind of DLC I can accept. Sure. Just don't charge me $5 for a red lightsaber. Why the fuck would you want a red lightsaber? Fine. That's purple. the worst color of lightsaber. You know what color of lightsaber you never see? Yellow. That's a lightsaber color. I'll accept purple. I'd also accept purple. <laughs> So, Dave, clearly we've run out of things to talk about. We have. We really have. Uh, do we have anything more? Nope. Okay. Play that outro.
We hope you enjoyed this episode of Two Fat Guys Talk. The Sword vs. Moon Rod art is by the talented Red Caliburn. Find her on Instagram and DeviantArt. R-E-D-C-A-L-I-B-U-R-N. Music tracks used were Bit Bit Loop and Good Nightmare by Kevin McLeod, found at freepd.com. Be sure to visit our site at animerave.xyz for more of this podcast and for Carlos and Dave Animerave, the best anime review and reaction show on the internet. If you like what you heard and can afford it, help keep us going by becoming a patron via the Patreon link on our site. If you can't afford it, no worries. Just spread the word. As always, thank you for listening. <laughs>